for this cause, God gave them up, gave them over to vile affection. Even animals, male and male animals do not meet. Even animals, female and female animals do not meet. When men has gone lower than animals, that is vile affection. God gave them up to vile affection. You know what God made at the beginning? He made one Adam and one Eve. Not one Adam and many Eves. He didn't make one Eve and many Adams. He made one Adam and one Eve. He didn't make Adam and Adams, men and men. He didn't make Eve and Evelyn, women and women. He made one man, Adam, and he went one woman, Eve. I'm excited to welcome you to Tunde Fumi YouTube channel. We ask that you please subscribe to our channel for inspirational songs, powerful messages, and content that will bless you. Please do subscribe and you will never remain the same again. God bless you. In Hebrews chapter 13, we're going to read verse 3. Hebrews 13, verse 3. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. That is, to be married without defilement pre marriage is honorable. But all mongers, fornicators, adulterers, God we judge. God still judges sin today. Let no modern preacher deceive you into believing that God loves you and loves your sin. God loves you but hates your sin. And when you sin and keep sinning, the Bible said God is angry with the wicked every day. God is not happy with sinners sinning. God is angry with the wicked every day. And so marriage should be honorable. Today we are dealing with the topic, relationship that God hates. Relationship God hates. Is it all forms of relationship God likes? Not at all. It says marriage is honorable. If you must have sexual intimacy with a person, marry him or her. The man should be married to the woman. The woman should be married to the man. Go through the regular and the normal process expected in the family, in your settings, and be married before any form of sexual intimacy. Relationship God hates. Number one, immoral boys and girls relationship. You have a boyfriend, you have a girlfriend, and you are indulging in a moral relationship, moral interaction, sexual intimacy in that friendship. That God aids. Number two, cohabitation. You are cohabiting with a person that you are not married to. You are living with someone and you are having sexual intimacy. Or you are not even having, maybe you are not even having sexual intimacy, but you are doing something closely. As if you are married, engaging in things that is meant for a married people. When the lady he says, I'm on campus and I'm living with a boy. And you are living with a boy in the same hostel. And you are doing things so intimately, God is against that. That God hates. Number three, gay marriage. Somebody says, uh -uh, why is he talking about that? We are saying a man and a woman in a relationship. Or they are lesbians. A woman and a woman in a relationship. And they are intimate. And they said, in fact, we want to even marry ourselves. In Romans chapter 1. In Romans chapter 1, verse 24. Wherefore God also, God gave them up to uncleanliness. To the lust of their own heart. Somebody said, I feel like being with someone of my gender. To the lust of your own heart. To dishonor their own body between themselves. And because of that in verse 26. For this cause, God gave them up. Gave them over to vile affection. Even animals, male and male animals do not meet. Even animals, female and female animals do not meet. When men has gone lower than animals, that is vile affection. God gave them up to vile affection. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. 
It's against nature for men to be with men. It is against nature for women to be with women. And the kind of sexual intimacy that some say they are after today in verse 27. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the women, born in their own lust one towards another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meant. And because of that, in verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, somebody said, When I was doing it, I felt God assured me that it is the right thing. It is because you did not like to retain God in your knowledge, and therefore God gave you over to a reprobate mind to do that which is unseemly, which is inconvenient, which is not convenient, which is unnatural. And that God ate. Another thing God ate, relationship God ate, what some people call trial marriage. You know, trial marriage is when people are married and they agree. Now let's check if this marriage does not work for one year, or doesn't work for two years, or it doesn't work for four years, we will break the marriage, we will divorce. That is trial marriage. We want to try it to see if it will work. But God, God ate putting away. God ate divorce. God in, uh, intend that when two people come together in intimacy, Mercy and choose to be husband and wife, they are to be for life together, for better, for worse. If you put it the, for, for life, they are to be for their lifetime. Not that if it doesn't work out, we'll break it. Not at all. That is not the intention of God. God do not like such relationship. And then polygamy, polygamy. Polygamy is when a man has more than one wife, or polyandry, when a woman has more than one husband. That God is. That is relationship that God dislike, that God condemned, that God said, this should not be. You know what God made at the beginning? He made one Adam and one Eve. Not one Adam and many Eves. He didn't make one Eve and many Adams. He made one Adam and one Eve. He didn't make Adam and Adams, men and men. He didn't make Eve and Evelyn, women and women. He made one man, Adam, and he went one woman, Eve. In 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 2, a bishop then must be blameless. And what makes him blameless here? The husband on one wife. The husband of one wife. And the wife should have one husband. And then vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, up to teach. I pray this day you will receive this teaching and you will avoid relationship that God aids in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for as many that are in the yoke of unhealthy relationship, in the yoke of unscriptural relationship, in the yoke of sinful relationship, they will repent before the judgment of God comes in Jesus' name. I pray they will not die in a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship that is immoral. They will not die in a kind of relationship of the same gender that is corrupting. They will not die in a trial marriage push. They will not die in cohabitation. They will not live in sin and ungodliness. I pray for anyone who is a polygamist right now, who is involved in polygamy, who has left the structure that the original marriage set for us. I pray you will grant them repentance and in whatever religion they have been deceived. I pray you will deliver them so that they will not die in polygamy. They will not live in polygamy. They will not end in polygamy. They will come out of it today and God will bless their lives and bless their marriage. Thank you, Lord, because I know you will give grace to as many that have received. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Amen. God bless you. Do involve only a relationship that pleases the Lord. In in the book of Corinthians, it says, Come out from among them and be ye separate, and the Lord will receive you as sons and daughters. God bless you.